Welcome to a new video from Elosoft, but today I'm going to show you what you can do with a power analyzer. In a previous video, I've talked about the effects of standby power consumption on your energy bills, and I've explained several concepts like the power factor and the difference between active, reactive and apparent power, so you can understand what you're actually measuring. Furthermore, I've shown you several methods on how to measure the standby power consumption of devices. The methods that were discussed in the video were with a current clamp, a true RMS multimeter and a power meter. If you want to know more about standby power consumption, the related important concepts, and you want to know how I did these measurements, go watch this video beforehand. The only method we did not discuss in this video was the use of a power analyzer to measure the standby power consumption. But why should you do standby power consumption measurements on a power analyzer? A power analyzer is very easy to use and it can clarify why you're measuring a certain active power by graphically showing the current and voltage signal and by measuring many other parameters. With a current clamp, you cannot measure the active power and with a current clamp or an oscilloscope, you would have to strip a power cable. With a digital multimeter with a special adapter or a power meter, you can measure the active power, but you do not know anything about the waveform of the device. Therefore, in this video, I'll be showing you what you can measure with a power analyzer. The power analyzer we will use in this video is the AIM TTI HA1600A harmonics flicker and power analyzer. The analyzer has a socket in which you can plug in your device and the analyzer can measure the active and apparent power, the voltage, current, total harmonic distortion, power factor, frequency, peak inverse current, crash factors and more of the connected device. This device can be used to measure the power quality and for compliance measurements. To be able to understand what you will see later on the display of the power analyzer, I am going to explain some concepts again. First, let me explain what total harmonic distortion is and how it is calculated. A perfect sinusoidal wave has a fundamental frequency, which is the main frequency of the signal. For instance, the 50 Hz you can measure from the mains. A harmonic is a waveform whose frequency is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency, such as 100 Hz, 150 Hz, 200 Hz, and so on. Current harmonics are created when waveforms deviate from their perfect sinusoidal shape. Current harmonics distort voltage waveforms and create distortion in the power system, which can cause many problems like overheating or breaking of the component. Therefore, harmonic compliance tests need to be done to make sure they have a low harmonic distortion. The total harmonic distortion is defined as the ratio of the equivalent root mean square current or voltage of all harmonic frequencies over the RMS current or voltage of the fundamental frequency. There is also a European norm related to harmonics that every consumer device needs to be complying to. The EN61032 is an international standard that limits mains voltage distortion by prescribing a maximum value for harmonic currents from the second harmonic up to and including the 40th harmonic current. The EN61032 aims to set limits to the harmonic currents drawn by electrical devices so the voltage quality from the mains can be maintained. The EN61032 is also one of the compliance measurements you can conduct with the power analyzer. The crest factor is a parameter of a waveform that shows the ratio of peak values to the RMS value. Or in other words, the crest factor indicates how extreme the peaks are in a waveform. So for a perfect sinusoidal wave, the peak value is a square root of 2 higher than its RMS value. However, for some loads such as switching power supplies or lamp ballasts, our current waveforms not always sinusoidal. They draw high current for a short period of time and their crest factor therefore can be quite higher than a square root of 2. But now let's try to do a measurement. We will do some tests on a random laptop charger as a load without the laptop being connected to it. First, here you can see the voltage and current waveforms of the laptop charger. The waveform seems very distorted, but this is because there is almost no current flowing. 
At the top of the display, you can see that the amount of current per division has changed to a pretty low value. On this display, we can take a look at the harmonics. As you can see, there's no DC component because the voltage from the mains is AC without an offset and there is a huge peak at the first integer in the frequency spectrum because this is the fundamental frequency. Another thing to point out is that there are only harmonics at the odd multiples of the fundamental frequency. We can also take a look at the meter display where we can see the measured data. Let me point out a couple of things. First of all, we can see that there's almost no active power being consumed. Furthermore, notice that the power factor is almost equal to zero and the apparent power is around 5 volt amperes, which means almost only reactive power is present. The reason that the power factor is almost equal to zero is because the current is out of phase with the voltage. So to summarize, first of all, I've explained the meaning of total harmonic distortion and the crash factor. Afterwards, we've done measurements on a power analyzer from AIM with a laptop charger. As you have seen, this power analyzer can be used to do compliance measurements and to fully analyze waveforms, but it can also be used to measure the standby power consumption of devices. But now, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the next video.